Jehovah's Witnesses are an interesting Christian denomination. There's much about them that is commendable. They have a strong focus on evangelism and reaching people they believe to be lost. They also have an emphasis on personal Bible study, all very good things. So why am I not a Jehovah's Witness? For one, they teach some unique doctrines not found in the Bible. When this is pointed out, instead of changing what they teach, they simply change the Bible instead. In fact, they have their own unique version of the Bible called the New World Translation. Parts of it are translated fine, but it regularly mistranslates things, adding or changing words to support Jehovah's Witness doctrine. For example, in John chapter 1, John clearly teaches that Jesus is God. They don't believe this, of course, so they change the Bible by adding the little word A. Jesus was a God, small g. They point to a variety of experts to support their position. The short story is that their own experts they cite in support of this translation refute their teachings outright. If you'd like to dive deeper into the translation and grammar, or if you have trouble sleeping at night, one expert they cite is Philip Harner in an article on Anarthur's predicate nominatives. Also, in Colossians chapter 1, verses 16 and 17, Paul teaches that Jesus made everything. For by him, all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him, and he is before all things, and in him all things consist. Jehovah's Witnesses, again, don't believe this, since they think Jesus to be a created being, Michael, the archangel. So they change the word of God four times in the short passage by adding the word other. By him all other things were created. He's before all other things, and in him all other things consist. In these and many more passages, their translation used to at least give indication that these words were added by including them in brackets. But now it doesn't even do that. Millions of people around the world read these mistranslations, take them at face value, and are unfortunately misled. Let's take a look at one more passage where instead of adding words, they just change what's there. In John chapter 8, Jesus identifies himself as God by calling back to Exodus. There, Moses is asking God, who is speaking through the burning bush, what is your name? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. Exodus chapter 3 and verse 14. Back to John 8, verse 58, Jesus said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. The Jews clearly recognized what he was saying because they immediately attempted to kill him for blasphemy. Jehovah's Witnesses recognize the importance of this passage as well because they intentionally mistranslate it to hide what it teaches. Their Bible says, before Abraham came into existence, I have been. The phrase I am in Greek is a very simple present tense verb. Their own kingdom interlinear correctly identifies it as such. Their Bible translates it correctly dozens of times in the book of John, every single time in fact, except for right here. They know how to translate the phrase, but they simply choose to mistranslate it when the Bible would contradict their doctrine. It's not difficult to show that Jesus is God, specifically Jehovah, even from their own translation. For instance, let's take a look at Psalm 102. Verse 1 says that this is a prayer to Jehovah. O Jehovah, hear my prayer. Jumping down to verse 25, the psalmist continues, Long ago you laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you will remain. Just like a garment, they will all wear out. Just like clothing, you will replace them, and they will pass away. But you are the same, and your years will never end. All of this is attributed to Jehovah. Okay, let's compare that to Hebrews chapter 1, where the writer directly quotes Psalm 102 and applies this description of Jehovah to Jesus. According to the Bible, Jesus is Jehovah. There are many other passages like this, too. Finally, one of the central pillars of the Jehovah's Witnesses is their various predictions. They've proudly made dozens of predictions about the end of the world that are publicly available in their official writings. Notably, 1878, 1881, 1914, 1918, 1925, and 1975. All of which have, of course, failed. And many of which were later retroactively revised. For just one instance, one of their founders, J.F. Rutherford, wrote an entire book 
Millions Now Living Will Never Die. The book was published over 100 years ago. The saddest part of all of this is that Jehovah's Witnesses are instructed to not question what they're taught. They're told not to read things by people who disagree with them, and are sadly unaware of their own history, oftentimes in the weaknesses of the various things that they teach. The Bible, on the other hand, encourages us to test or prove all things. Hold fast to that which is good. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 21. Whether or not you are a Jehovah's Witness, if you'd like to ask difficult questions, if you'd like to see for yourself what the Bible says, please reach out to us. We'd love to chat with you.